It's going to be a rough night. Um, the kedge anchor is just dragging. She's just not holding me stable on the beach. I have never, ever seen such huge riptides around here. Um, and what's happening is I'm just literally drifting into the marsh and I'm on the strand line. So it's going to be a long night. Low tide is going to be about two o'clock. Um, and the only thing I can think of is just to keep getting out, keep pushing her back onto the beach um, a bit further down so that I've got enough water to get off in the morning because it's a falling spring tide and it's going to be a half a metre difference. Um, perhaps not all the way up here, but, but certainly enough. So, and then the only thing I can think of is burying or getting the kedge anchor near a rock or something like that. It's such a privilege having Plymouth Sound as my home waters. Not many people know, but it's actually our nation's first designated marine but national park. Amazing, isn't it? We've got such a great mixture of sea, tidal, rivers, lagoons, and there's so many ecosystems to explore in this area. I mean, you've got estuaries, mudflats, salt marshes, sandy beaches, pebble beaches, reed beds, there's kelp forests, seagrass meadows, everything. It's an absolutely amazing place. And that's before we start exploring the extraordinary agricultural, industrial, military history and archaeology around the area. You know, you've got to go back to the 18th and 19th centuries and, and you've got to remember that Plymouth and its um, sort of neighbouring towns up the River Tamar were the centres for farming, mining, shipbuilding, fishing, all sorts of international trade as well. I'm a very lucky man, I know, and I get to sail it in a boat that I built with my own hands. Just had the Core Sand Ferry coming towards us now, and she's just passing by. A few yachts and pleasure boats going out. literally being carried out on the outgoing tide here. Little to no wind whatsoever. Which is what I, which is what I was expecting. Um, high tide was half past eight this morning and it's now quarter to 12. So we're um, about coming up on halfway through, near enough, not far off. Not a big fan of light wind sailing. Always bouncing around a bit and always makes me feel slightly seasick. So, not the world's biggest fan. of flotsam going on the outgoing tide here, following the river current out. Already passed a couple of logs, so I'm just keeping a wary eye forward. been such a difficult summer for sailing. The weather has just been absolutely pants um, and every time I've managed to get 
somewhere where I thought, oh yeah, I can go sailing. Um, a weather front suddenly came in and you had 15, 20, 25 knots of wind. Then we had a few storms. Um, and then on a couple of occasions I've had, I've been ill and you just think, you know, it's just conspired this year um, against me. But here we are. Um, not ideal, could do with a bit more breeze, but we are out on the water and that's the main thing. It's so nice to be out here. Admiralty barge over there just uh, coming off the big RFA supply vessel. a really lovely day isn't it? Nice couple of days hopefully. Fishing boats on the move. I've got a lot of Hunters on board, caught a few mackerel, not big ones, but a few are coming in. I think we're going to be waiting for a bit before we go back up the Tamar. many with their sails up but we're going I think it's more to do with the tide than anything else I've repaired the roller furler um, it kept jamming um, so I had to take it um, down and take it apart and reassemble it and it's been working perfectly fine since then done a number of test tries out on the drive. If you're going to ask me what caused it to jam, I have no idea. But every time I did it, it kept breaking. Now it seems fine, just one of those things. A couple of new burgies. Um, the blue and white one is the small tradi uh, traditional sailing boat. That's a forum on Facebook and it's a lovely group actually, very friendly and lots of interesting stuff there and some very talented people. The yellow and blue one is of course um, the Dinghy Cruising Association and again they're on Facebook but they've got their own website and they're well worth joining. Um, they have an annual programme of rally meets so if you're UK based um, there'll be a rally in your area and the people are incredibly knowledgeable, incredibly friendly, really helpful. Um, you learn loads, whatever level you're at. And their journal, their journal quarterly is absolutely fantastic. Four times a year, packed full of rally reports and articles about small boats, um, dinghies uh, uh, cruising, um, well worth joining. I'm not sure I've shared my plans with you for the next couple of days yet. Um, I'm sailing for two days and my plan is to revisit somewhere I haven't overnighted on for about, oh, I don't know, four or five years. So we're going to sail the Sound this morning and then when the tide turns we'll make our way up the River Tamar to Hen Point, which is at the mouth of the River Liner, where we'll pick up a mooring buoy and wait for the tide to build further. Uh, as soon as the tide starts building, we'll then head up the river liner to a place called Dandy Hole. And just 
on the northern side of Dandy Hole. Um, there's a little um, mud shingle beach which is backed by a lovely salt marsh and that's called Red Shanks Beach and that's our destination for tonight. It's a lovely sheltered anchorage and I think it's going to be evening meal on the beach, possibly a small campfire after it gets dark. Um, and with a bit of luck, we've got cloudless skies tonight, so some Milky Way astrophotography might be in the frame as well. Now, I was talking to a couple of ecologists I know who said they were up there a few weeks ago doing some water quality sampling. And they saw lots of otter scat around the salt marsh area, so you never know, tonight you might see otters, and that would be great, wouldn't it? Just went into the wind shadow then of the big um, Royal Fleet Auxiliary vessel. It's really weird, isn't it? It's amazing how they block that wind. The wind has shifted around to the south and it is just beginning to pick up actually. So we've had some nice sailing um, and it won't be long, I think, before we can start heading up the Tamar. I'm just heading over this way because there's something in the water here and I'm not quite sure what it is but it looks to me like well it's not a tree I don't think um, but we'll have a look I think it's a it's to me like it's a I don't know what it is have a look Um, it must have been um, hit by a propeller or something like that, bless its heart. Um, looks as if it's been in the water quite dead quite some time. Very sad. I know there's been quite a few dolphins um, up the Tamar and around over the last few weeks um, and the boats will try and get quite close to them. So. Okay, we'll pop around and uh, Take a sail into Corsan Bay and then we'll be ready to head up the Tamar, I think. Well, the wind died again, but I've made my turn and I'm just at the entrance to Corsan Bay and I'm starting to head for the Tamar. So that's Corsan Bay over there. Um, I've taken you over there many times. Um, the village to the left is Corsan, the village to the right is Kingsand. And then we're just off Fort Picklecombe here. 
behind Fort Picklecombe, sorry, is uh, the country park which is Mount Edgecombe. And right down there you can see a block of flats, that's the entrance to the Tamar and that's where we're heading now. We'll go down through the bridges and so the wind is coming practically from a stern so we're heading north um, so we're on a, a downward a downward uh, drift I hope there's a bit more wind when we come to the Tor Point ferries or else it's going to be very embarrassing making this progress between them they are not going to be happy It's two o'clock and we're just coming up on low tide now so the tidal flow is minimal so we're heading down towards the bridges and into the Tamar and with a bit of luck we should make it up the Tamar being carried a lot by the incoming tide I suspect there is a little bit of a breeze, but it's very, very fickle. Um, it just keeps filling and, and then dying away. So it will be a lot of tide carrying us, I think. But we'll see how we get on. I sort of have this determination not to be motoring or rowing today. Um, Arwen doesn't row that far. She was never built for long-distance rowing. She, she just isn't. She's too broad. Um, so small amounts of rowing, fine, but not anything lengthy. So I'm hoping we've got enough wind because I don't want to use the outboard if I can help it. You can just make off that point where the white marker is. There's quite a few hazards there. That's why you go through the bridges. You can see old pylons, um, a couple of rock outcrops. Um, you know, foolish is the sailor who tries to take an, uh, an inside shore cut through there. I've been keeping an eye out for the porpoise, but I haven't seen any. Um, and I haven't heard any reported sightings in the last couple of days. So perhaps they, they um, went off somewhere else with the bad weather. got to watch the winds here uh, we start getting all sorts of funneling effects as you come through the entrance um, the tide should carry me because the tide's coming in so that's the Kremel gun battery and that's the Royal William Yard and we've just got one of the MOD police boats just going down the side of me it's as I feared the wind has died somewhat as we came around here. Over there um, is the creek up to Millbrook and I'm not quite sure how much tide is in there, there won't be much at the moment, um, but the low shed you can see is the South Down Marina, it's, there's a nice cafe in there as well. Um, I'm just trying to decide whether I feel brave enough to um, have a little explore in there. Ooh, scary, it's because I'm bound to get stranded. 
let's give it a go or or i'll lose the wind that's what i'm more fearful of because it'll be in the lee of that headland No, I can see the mud flats all there, and I know I'm going to lose the wind, I think. Um, so maybe we'll pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> I'm brave, but I ain't that brave. <laughs> there we are. I've just lost the wind. I knew I would. That headland. OK, let's uh, head back up over there to the main channel. Oops. And see if we can... Um, see if we can... Uh, pick up some of the wind well I found the dolphin <laughs> they're up here there's literally one has just come up for a, I didn't have the camera one's just come up for a nosy and has gone down they are such shy creatures no nope, he's gone down he's snuffling well, we'll keep an eye out for some more Aha! What's that? I think they're over there. I think I've just seen them. I think they're just over in that area. I think they're, um, they chase the mackerel onto the sandbanks. I very rarely sail in this area. Um, whenever I come up the Tamar, I tend to be heading up the Tamar. So I very rarely come over into this Millbrook area. Um, and it's really quite nice. When the tide's in, um, this would be a really nice area to sail. But you can see those flats, um, very extensive. The wind has died just when I didn't want it to, which is basically approaching these ferries. And I've got an inkling that at this speed, we may well have to lower the motor actually to get through. Okay, we've got one arriving. We've got one well clear. So, only pain in the backside is going to be that one over there because they're about to set off. Wind has picked up, which is exactly what I needed right at that right moment. So that's good. Boat too soon, the wind's just died. Ah, no, that's not what I want. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Be nice. Didn't make it. There it is. There was no way I was going to do it, so I'm just holding off in a minute, and as soon as I can, I'm going to do what that boat did, which is go around the back of it. I knew it was going to be a close run thing. It's all a matter of timing. And there's the big frigate yards. Got the police boat up ahead. They'll just be keeping a wary eye on me that I don't go too close. What I'm going to do is um, go up to the mouth of the liner um, to a place called Hen Point and I'll just moor up, take a vacant mooring at Hen, Hen Point and just wait for the tide to build for a bit.